is happening, Budget Builders, and welcome back to the channel. We're here with this 1960 Falcon six-cylinder three-speed that has been off the road since 1985. And in today's video, we're gonna try to get it running for the first time in 37 years. It looks like all the tires are gonna take air surprisingly with all the other cars that were in front of this thing it just gives you an idea of how long these things have been packed in here huge shout out to them for helping us pull this out we're gonna move some cars out of the way drag this one up Well, it definitely took some motivating those brakes after sitting for so long, but we did get it up here in the shop. Now it's time to get up under this hood. Now one thing you will notice, it's not in perfect shape under here, but as crusty as this car is, it's surprisingly not terrible looking in here. <laughs> wow, that hood is rough. <laughs> One thing, another thing that you're gonna notice is the motor is blue. This would have originally been a black motor with a red valve cover. And let's see why that is. If you look right here on the, on the data tag, we can see that the one, two, three, four, fifth digit over is an S, which is a 144, which is the only thing this thing came with. Now this, because it's blue, looks like it might be a 200. What the heck? Oh, it's got a little holly under there. But I want to see, yep, right here on the intake, which is part of the head is C6, which is 66. That's your date code. So that tells me this is probably a 200 out of a little Mustang or possibly even another little Falcon, which is kind of cool. Maybe that's why this thing was uh, hot rotted out with the cool air scoop and the lightweight hood and the cutout fenders. I'm not sure, but it's kind of neat that it does have a 200 in it. Looks surprisingly decent under here for a car of this nature that's this rotten and has been sitting for many years. We definitely have the opportunity for plenty of moisture to get in that motor. So before we even try to start rocking this thing over, seeing if it's free, let's go ahead and pull these spark plugs and kind of get an idea of the condition of our cylinders. some rust on those plugs they're not oh my goodness that last plug although definitely an old champion nice and clean as far as any kind of rust or anything Number five, pretty crispy. Clean on the combustion chamber though. Four, clean. That's an auto light. Bunch of, ri oh. That's a different auto light. 
and then the champion. We'll see what we get next. Okay, this is a another diff, completely different auto light. Clean combustion chamber though. There's another champion. Clean combustion chamber. And then we have a really crusty auto light, but clean cylinder. Even though we do have what looks to be really clean cylinders, I'm going to soak them down with some penetrating oil, just in case we happen to have some light rust on the rings from moisture over the years. Dad, do you mind grabbing that fan and see it if it wants to rock the motor over? Put a turn in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's got good compression. <laughs> so this car's so crusty, Dad figured out why they put the scoop on. It had a rust hole straight through the hood and they were covering it up. Now even though the okay. <laughs> now even though the oil looks fairly clean and it may have been new 37 years ago, we don't know what may have settled in the bottom of that pan, what kind of sediments or junk there is. Oil's cheap relative to an engine. I always like to even before you even start turning it over, pumping oil through, let's get some fresh in there. Something I notice is odd, and I don't know that I've noticed on a 200 is the drain is at the back. I wonder if this is maybe out of an Econo line or something. By 66, would that be the full size Econo line? Yeah, so I don't I don't know what this came out of. I've just never seen that. Not too shabby. No. Looks pretty good and pretty gassy too, so Probably that carburetor weeped whatever was in it into the cylinders and down into the pan. So it's always good to go ahead and get it changed. While we're putting a new filter in, I always like to use the Motorcraft FL1A. And it doesn't hurt anything to go ahead and pre-lube it. Some people say it doesn't need it. It doesn't necessarily need it, but why not give it a little oil just a little bit quicker on a motor that's been sitting this long dry. On these old motors that were designed around using a high zinc oil, I always like to run a zinc additive in them. Just for the heck of it. I don't know what this thing is. I wonder if this thing has a ton of blow by or something. That's cute. I hate all the cicadas and stuff this time of year. They make so much noise. Sorry for all the cicada noise and stuff. They are crazy right now. Probably sounds like we're at a bug farm. And you all probably notice, I just want to mention, using this box oil, which I've never done before. This is Havoline 10W40, which I like to run, especially when it's hot, just old standard oil. But this is six quarts, and it costs the same as four or five quarts of everything else. It's actually really relatively inexpensive. I was gonna say, before we start turning this thing over, and I still probably will, let's disconnect this fuel line. It's uh, kind of disconnected itself. And the reason I say that is accidentally while we're moving this thing around, I kind of punctured the tank a little bit and what's left of it is dripping and it's bad. Got the whole shop stunk up. So we definitely don't want that flowing into that carburetor if we don't have to. We'll also notice with this fuel pump, this is actually the original one that came off the 144 because it has the vacuum side to it. By 66, it would have been like the Mustang, just a normal one phase fuel pump instead of this dual supply deal here. My gut feeling is we should probably change this positive cable. <laughs> Holy moly. If that was a negative, I, uh, I'd say I'd probably leave it and tape it kind of like, they, like they've already done here. <laughs> That's fancy. But no, let's let's put a new positive cable on there. That could be really dangerous. Moment of truth. And super duper surprising. You know, we bought this car with the 61 Galaxy from that auction. 
They both came with keys. Oh, we got gin and oil. Any lights? Always oh, gotta check lights. Look at that. Oh, These are so good. funny. They lost, they put like plastic here instead of lenses. They both work. Headlights. All right. You ready? Oh, why am I sitting in that seat? Instinct kicked in. I kind of just plopped down in there. Wow, these seats are bad. They're a pretty decent set of Mustang seats. Metal frames look to be solid. I wish they were real Falcon seats. You notice it does have a real center console, which is one reason we got it. But the so seats are solid, just need new foam. Oh man, okay. It is kind of funny, they pulled the column shift out of here, put a little shifter with a goofy little extension. Which I think's kind of neat. Make sure we're in neutral. Oh yeah. <laughs> Terrible sound at level starter. <laughs> hey, it spins over though. Let's see if we got fire. Pretty clean looking cap on the inside. Fresher set of points and condenser, but of course, with sitting nice and crusty on the inside in there. You see all that buildup on those points. I do have a brand new set of points that came off of the Mustang because we did go to electronic ignition with that car. And instead of trying to clean those, let's just go ahead and throw these in here. What in the world? They have it triple nut nutted. Not there. And another one. I am going to leave that condenser in there. Even though it's not the original, it is quite a bit older and the quality of these have only gone downhill, so we might as well use it. After putting a little bit of grease on there, we can put our new points in. Don't forget your little ground. And you only need one nut on there. Having two, you're just asking for loose connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, got a good condenser. Beautiful, this thing's gonna run. Went ahead and got our new spark plugs in there. The gap is 32 to 36 thousandths. We did kind of just a rough in the middle 34 thousandths. Got those put in there, verified our firing order, and I have gone ahead and got our fuel system hooked up for now. I have a feeling this little haul of here is probably going to spew everywhere, but if it was, we know what necessarily run out of gas because that's some nasty gas in there, but let's see if it happens to hold anything, but it's probably gonna leak everywhere. You ready? It's taking fuel. Oof. It had bad gas in it. Oh my goodness, it had it in the carburetor. It is holding it. You've got to be kidding me. Let's run this hot rod. <laughs> or attempt to. <laughs> I was leaking a little bit. That's just the right amount of leakage. Let's go. Full send, let's do this. Full send. Hold on. Don't get too cranky. You already got gas in it. All right, go ahead. Whoa, whoa. Okay, our battery's not bad. Our cables aren't happy. Surface <laughs> the starter. Maybe the uh, Decenic. Wow. Oh my goodness. I tried to tell you when we got to change these cables out. It looks like a brand new one. My professional automotive opinion on the situation is that uh, that cable is no longer any good. A little extra long. We got a good boat cable here we had laying around. Yep, give her a try.
notice the oil light's still on? Uh-uh. Yeah. Oh yeah? Is it, it even hooked up? Uh, it sounds great. There's no way this thing yeah. doesn't have oil pressure. That's what I said, is it? There's no coolant in it though, I do know that. Oh yeah. Hey, this thing's a runner. <laughs> and it actually sounds fairly good. Yeah, I don't know that it would have run off of, off of that stuff. <laughs> All right, we got some water in it. Why don't we fire this thing back off? Let me see if I can kick that idle down a little bit. This thing is idled way crazy high. And tell me if that oil light comes off. I do want to verify we have good oil pressure. Go ahead. Please, sir. Go ahead. So dad mentioned when we do rev it, the light is turning, uh, slowly turning off and it comes right back on. What it is, is I think there's gunk in that oil, in the oil sending unit. The way this thing sounds, there's no way that this, uh, you know, we've got, these are hydraulic lifters and everything. And if we had no oil pressure, this thing would be clattering and a clanging everywhere. And it sounds really good. So I think we just need a sending unit, but that carburetor is not happy. Uh, I can try to, no, we just need a build. There's no, I don't know. Let me try to tune on it a little bit, but <laughs> it definitely needs to be built. I don't have a kit on the shelf. And it's gonna take a minute to get one, but we do have another Holly. This actually came out of the Econa line. Just a couple of these extra Hollies in there. This one looks pretty good. Why don't we throw this on here and see if maybe it runs better. Well, we got the carburetor off. Uh, I guess I'll check the vacuum advance on the distributor. And it does not work. It's just straight through. <laughs> okay, we might as well just uh, not hook that up for now. Hmm. All right, let's try to fire it back off again. it runs it's not perfect there's just a lot to dial in but it actually sounds really good and really healthy for as long as it has sat we know it runs i think we at least got to see if it drives wow this is one bad interior we have no brakes we've got 
We've got no brakes. No emergency brake? Nope. No emergency brake, no brakes. Okay, Dad's gonna try to put fluid in there. That's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, storm's coming. Storm is coming in. We gotta try to get out here before it starts raining. Summertime, this heat, some nasty storms coming through. Oh, that thing's, oh, nice. You're gonna, you gonna take the paint off of this car, Dad. We know that's not gonna work, and those rears are ugly, but maybe we can at least bleed this front one so we have one brake. All right. What? I mean, it bubbled a little bit in the last two we hadn't done anything. I actually got air burbles that time. Okay. Like I said, it's starting. It's I I mean it's just more air than anything. Okay. We got one front brake. <laughs> we got one front brake working. Let's do this. was a ton of fun. I am absolutely covered head to toe in whatever this interior stuff that's everywhere. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> we don't normally get them running and go, go driving them or anything. We had to with this one and that was well worth it. That was so flipping fun. The engine is running really good. Obviously throttles up and down. There's no throttle adjustment on that carburetor. So you kind of got to keep feathering it and everything. 
clutch is maybe out of adjustment or there is no synchronizers because it grinds, 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 grinds. But it drove, it ran and drove after being off the road last registered in 1985. This thing is a ton of fun, other than slinging some gravel on dad, which he wasn't super about, happy about, but <laughs> I gotta be careful messing around in the yard here because all this gravel and these old cars that are sitting around. But I really hope you all enjoyed this episode. That was a ton of fun. Obviously this car is really, really, really rough. Paper thin quarters. The rockers are the only solid thing on the car because they are galvanized. Frame rails are completely rotted out. The whole front end is rotted out. And sadly, realistically, this car is in almost too bad a shape to actually try and save, I guess you would say, to restore to a decent level. These cars are a dime a dozen. They're relatively inexpensive. You can pick up a nice little runner for $2,500. And so it's hard to, the reason we did buy this one is for that six cylinder to put in another Falcon we have. And we do have another Falcon and there's tons of parts. This car has the nice center console. It has a really nice deluxe interior in it. But as far as everything else on the car, it's in really, really bad shape. The drivetrain, awesome though. But I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did and you like these will it runs and rescues, we do have rebuilds and restorations. Primarily, we save these cars to save them and get them back out on the road. This one's gonna go to help a few other ones get back out on the road. But if you are enjoying that, be sure to subscribe button, notification bell, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you all think of this episode. And if you have been following along and you do watch our videos, we really do appreciate it so incredibly much. It's what gives us the ability to be able to do fun stuff like that. But that'll wrap it up. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side. <music>